Have you heard of human design? Nope. What's that? She proceeds to tell me that it is a synthesis of astrology, the Chinese I Ching, the chakra system, Kabbalah, and quantum physics. And I was like, what? How have I never heard of this? These are all things that I love and have studied at some point in my life. Like, how have I never heard of this? And this is how my human design journey began. Welcome to the last episode of season one of the Lifestyle, Relationship, and Career Human Design podcast. In this season, we have gone over all of the basic fundamental elements of your human design chart. And if you started from the very beginning, you could have known absolutely nothing about human design and now have a really good understanding of your own chart. I'm your host, Vanessa Naja, and in today's episode, I'm going to share with you my human design story through the lens of my own chart. I figure this is a great way to finish season one and soon we'll be moving on into season two and I'll share more about that towards the end of the episode. So if you are watching this, I will be sharing my chart on the screen so you can see it. And if you're listening, I will do my best to describe it. I am a 5-1 emotional manifesting generator. And if you listen to the season, 5-1 is my profile. And we talked about profiles in episode, let's see, episode 29 through 35. I'm an emotional, man uh, I'm an emotional authority. And we talked about the authorities from episode 10 through episode 16. I'm a manifesting generator, and we talked about types, uh, episode 2 through episode 8. So you can go back and review all of those if you feel so inclined. If you're looking at my chart right now, the way I like to think of it, it looks like somebody threw spaghetti at a wall and there appeared a human design chart. My chart is very heavily defined. There's lots of red. There's lots of black. Um, it, it looks a little bit all over the place, which I find very fascinating. I am a manifesting generator and manifesting generators, we are the, uh, I like to think of us a little bit as the spaghetti throwers of the human design system, trying to check out all the different things, see what fits, what doesn't fit, pivoting a lot, um, working with different things at the same time. So it's, it's appropriate that my chart looks like somebody threw spaghetti and I do love it. Looking at my chart, when I first discovered human design, when it came to me, when my friend told me about it, and my response was like, what, how have I not heard of this? That was a really big fat sacral response, which is my human design strategy as a manifesting generator type. I respond to what the universe brings to me and human design for me was a big fat yes. As soon as I was around a computer later that evening, I immediately started my deep dive research which I continue to do years and years later. Now, this is a really great example of the first line in my profile. Those first lines love to research and I resonate so much with that. I discovered some interesting things and some very fascinating little synchronicities. One of the things that I learned right away was that human design, the founder of human design, Raul Ru, actually lived in Ibiza, Spain, which is where he basically found and discovered the system. Now, I have a very strong relationship to Ibiza because my father lived there and I have been visiting there and spending significant amounts of time there my entire life, including pretty much every summer throughout my childhood. So I found that an interesting little synchronicity. I also realized that Ra died on the same day as my father, except for I think seven years before my dad did. So I just, all these little signs and signals. And I don't know about you, but I definitely pay attention to synchronicities. Of course, I immediately started researching books because I absolutely love to read. And I knew this system was something that I really had to dive deep into. I started buying books. Before you knew it, I had invested quite a bit of money into a long certification program because I also, as a first line profile, love to get certified in things. And I do really like to study and dive deep. Now, if you look at my profile, you will see I have eight out of nine centers defined. And I wanted to walk you through it a little bit just to let you know this is like how I experience this definition and how you may relate to it through the lens of what we've gone through during this first season of the podcast. So we will start 
Let's start at my root center. And we talked about the root center in episode 26. And this is about how you handle stress, adrenaline, and pressure. My root center is defined, and it is connected to my sacral center, also known as the energy resource in BG5, the business application of human design. Now, people that have a defined root center do tend to process stress in a more consistent way. And one thing I've always found interesting is that when there have been periods in my life where I have had, you know, either some kind of a medical thing or something that may be considered stress-induced, people would always ask, oh, have you been under more stress than usual lately? And my answer was always like, no, I haven't. And one of the things that I realized, because if I look at those time periods objectively, is like, yes, I was under more stress, yet the way that I process stress is very consistent and it just wasn't as obvious to me as somebody else that might really be amplifying stress and pressure with an op open root that I really was under more stress during those times. Now, my root center is connected to my sacral center. This is one of the things that makes me a manifesting generator. So remember, anybody that has a defined sacral center, and we went over the sacral center in episode, let's see, in episode 25. If you have a defined sacral center, you're either a generator or a manifesting generator. I have four channels coming off of my sacral center, which is quite a few, and my sacral center is connected as a result to four other centers. Now, generators and manifesting generators, part of our overarching purpose is to do meaningful work that we love and to love the work that we do. And I can say that is absolutely true for me, although it hasn't always been. Even before human design, I had gotten into a place where I was always doing meaningful work that I love, but in the early stages of my life, not so much. Now, my, the way that my root is connected to my sacral center is through a channel called the channel of maturation or the channel or the strength of cycles, as we call it in BG5. And in my early 20s, I remember thinking, wow, I feel like I have already lived multiple lifetimes in this lifetime, and I was only in my 20s. Now, this particular channel operates in cycles. People that have this defined go through distinct cycles in, in their lives that have very obvious beginnings, middles, and ends. And even by my early 20s, I'd already been very aware of going through these cycles. We all do live our lives in cycles to a certain degree. However, if you have this channel defined, this is going to be really obvious to you and your cycles might be very consistent. I noticed looking back in my life, I have very distinct cycles around relationships, around career, around work, and various other things as well. My sacral center is also connected to my spleen centers. It is intuition. It is what keeps us safe in the now. It's very much related to the body. It is the oldest awareness center, and it's about keeping us safe and healthy in the now and our intuition. The way that my sacral is connected to my spleen is through the channel 2750. Now, this channel is very much about nurturing and caring for others as well as yourself. There can be a lot of codependency in this channel. And let me tell you, I have experienced a lot of that in my life. And even before human design, I had done so much work around this. And when I learned about this in my chart, I was like, oh my God, this makes so much sense. I actually have this channel defined twice. So both, both of the gates, the 27 and the 50 that come together in this channel, these are two out of only three gates that I have defined more than once in my chart. And the 27 is my unconscious sun. So it's very significant in my chart. Now, the 2750 channel is, is really amazing at helping and supporting and caring for other people, provided that it cares for itself first. So this has definitely been a lifelong lesson and one I am so happy to say that I have really learned through human design, making sure that I give from a full cup rather than completely depleting myself and self-sacrificing for other people. When I was younger, I did this a lot. I just gave, 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 and then there was nothing left and this resulted in a lot of frustration and resentment and was not good for my relationships. My sacral center is also connected to my G center. And that is the center of love, identity, and direction. My, it is connected through the channel 214, which is very much about doing meaningful work that you love, which provides resources and direction for yourself and for others. I, I've pivoted directions a lot, which is a manifesting generator thing. But it also, if you remember the episodes about profile, 
I have a third line on the gate that defines my G center, and the third line is very mutative and can adapt and change quickly. When I learned this, it made so much sense to me because I do change directions a lot. I'm following my strategy and authority. I've never been overly concerned with my direction. I've always felt pretty secure in it, which somebody that has an undefined G center might not feel at all. And the gift of the 214 is also that it can really help other people with their direction. And I have found many times in my life that people, my friends, my loved one, my clients come to me in order for me to help them with their direction. The last channel that I have coming off my sacral center is the 3420, which connects the sacral to the throat chakra. We talked about the throat center, which we talked about in episode 20. Now, the 3420 channel, it's a fairly common channel. It's the only channel in the chart that is called a manifesting generator channel. There are other ways to be a manifesting generator without having the 3420, but anybody that has the 3420 is definitely a manifesting gener generator. And the 34, that part of the chart really likes to be busy. It's responsive. It likes to be busy. It likes to have different plates spinning at all times. And the channel 3420 really likes to to put things into action quickly. Now, this channel is defined unconsciously for me. I talked about the unconscious definition in episode 28, 27, actually episode 27 and 28. So there are aspects of our design that we are aware of, that we're conscious of, and then there are those that are unconscious and they're operating beneath the surface and you might not be aware of them. So learning about this with that 3420 for me, one of the low expressions of that channel is it can be in a rush, it can be in a hurry all the time. It is super fast. And if you ask me what my pet peeve is, my pet peeve is lines. I do not like lines. I don't like lines at the grocery store. I don't like lines in restaurants. I don't like lines at an amusement park. I don't like lines of cars in traffic. I really don't like lines because I don't like to wait. I'm impatient. And I also want to keep moving. And having that 3420 unconscious like Things that slow me down can be super frustrating for me. And this is an area I've gotten so much more awareness around, and I still have plenty of work to do because I definitely can be very impatient. And this is one of the ways that actually shows up in my chart. Now, my throat center is also connected to my Ajna center, or the conceptualization function, as we call it, in BG5. And it is connected through channel 1762, and this is very much about logical energy, about forming opinions over time based on details. One of the gifts of this channel is that it is able to explain difficult, complex topics in a way that is more easily digestible. And that is something that I, I hope to do for you in the human design system, because it is a fairly, it's a complex system. It goes really deep. There are so many layers to it. And trying to explain it in a way that makes sense, and also that it's practical, which is part of my fifth line um, in my profile, is something that I really strive to do for you. Now, having a defined ajna, for me, I am, my mind is constantly busy. It's constantly thinking. And it people that have a designed, defined ajna, as well as a defined head, which I don't actually have, like we are thinkers and it is okay to be thinking all the time. I, I do need to be careful about getting stuck in thought loops and just being aware of that and making sure to come back into my body, doing different types of practices that really work for me, like meditation, breath work, movement practices can really help me with that, especially when my mind is, is really going off the rails. So if you have a defined ajna, you may very much relate to that. Now let's go to the parts of my chart that are split off. And we talked about splits in the chart in the last two episodes, 36 and 37. I am a single split. So remember, if you or a small split, okay, if, if you have a split, for me, this means there's two distinct areas of my chart that are not connected to each other. I just walked you through all the parts of my chart that are connected. Now we're going to talk about my emotional solar plexus and my will center. They're connected to each other, but they are split off from the rest of my chart. Now, this becomes interesting because I have emotional authority. So I am meant to make decisions, the big decisions in life over time by feeling my way through my emotional wave. My solar plexus is defined unconsciously, which makes it 
requires me to really develop more awareness of what is actually going on for me emotionally. And it's split off from the rest of my chart. And one of the things that I've learned about myself over the years, and human design has clearly shown me in my human design body graph, is that my emotional center is a huge, huge area of learning and growth for me. And it's a very big focus of my life. Having emotional authority, having it split off from the rest of my chart. And as a result, those little bridging gates on my chart that would connect the two are a big factor of my own conditioning. I have recognized this looking back on my life in so many situations. I talked about this last week about how this has shown up for me in, in dysfunctional relationships and also the areas that are really a big place of deconditioning for me. Again, having the center split off, it takes me even longer to make decisions than somebody that might have emotional authority that is conscious and connected to the rest of their chart, especially somebody that might have single definition where the energy flows through everything equally. It takes me a little bit longer. And I will say this has been, this is an area where I actually have become very patient. It's been a huge gift for me to understand my emotional authority and specifically how it is defined. Because now I used to get a lot of FOMO, that fear of missing out, that I need to make a decision right now because what if I miss out? I don't have that anymore because I know the right decisions are definitely going to wait for me. And the longer, the more time that I take to really feel into emotional clarity, the better those things turn out. So this is an area that I love about my design. And season two of this podcast is going to be all about emotional intelligence. And that is not just the emotional solar plexus. Emotional aspects show up in all areas of your chart, not just the solar plexus, although that is the center for emotion. And whether you have a center defined or not, season two is definitely going to have some nuggets of wisdom for you. So I hope you join me in season two. Getting back to the centers in my chart, I do have my ego center defined. It's connected to my solar plexus. It is defined unconsciously. And the ego, the willpower, this is very much about willpower. And one of the big lessons in this center is that it needs, it works to rest. Whether you have a center defined or not, having a balance between work and rest is super important. Now, when you have a center defined, it's really easy to just willpower your way through all kinds of things and then eventually just kind of burn out. So I have learned to really obey and listen and honor my body and to work when the energy is there for whatever that specific work is, because I could have energy, for example, for recording, editing a podcast, but not energy for doing my taxes. And you might think nobody ever has energy to do their taxes. I have actually learned over the years that when I wait for that energy to come on to do my taxes, it eventually comes on and my taxes get done with little frustration. The time is well spent and it actually takes a lot less time for me to get my taxes done than when I am forcing my way through because I feel like I have to do it now. So this is also related to my root center. But this is just one of the ways that I've really learned to honor my design and to do the work when the energy is there and to allow myself to rest and to make sure I have rest breaks built in so that I can use my energy in the most efficient way. That brings me to my last center. This is my head center. And if you are watching this, you will see that my head center is completely open. There are no gates to find on it whatsoever. It's my only undefined center and it is completely open. Remember, if you have a center that is undefined, you're going to be experiencing that energy in a more inconsistent way. If it's completely open, meaning you look at that center and there's no little gates colored in at all, then you're really open to all of the different ways that that energy expresses itself, which can be confusing and weird and is also a source of great wisdom for you. Now, with my open head center, in the shadow, this is very much about losing focus, about being distracted, about thinking about things that really don't matter, and about trying to answer questions that are really not yours to answer. And I relate to this on so many levels. Thinking about things that don't matter and thought loops, also related to my defined Ajna, is something that I'm so familiar with. And just understanding how this works, I now see when I do it, I notice, oh, there I am, I'm thinking about things that don't matter. And I can bring myself back to the present and really focus on honoring my strategy and authority and living into the highest expression of my design. 
Same thing with answering questions that I don't need to answer. And this is particularly fun on social media because you see questions on social media all the time. And I was always that person that was like, I need to answer this question and immediately start researching in my first line to answer people's questions that really ended up just wasting a lot of time. It wasn't my question to answer. I didn't really care about the question. And I really didn't need to research something I do not care about because I felt the need to answer other people's questions. This can very much show up in the head center because this is where questioning lives. Distraction and losing focus, also a big theme here. Um, shining object syndrome, feeling inspired by everything all the time. All things that I've, I've become very clear about when this is happening so that I can bring myself back into an area of the correct focus for me. Now, the beautiful thing about anything that is undefined in your chart, so this could be centers, it could also be gates and channels, are that these are areas of potential really great wisdom for you. And I continue to work into stepping into the wisdom of my undefined, completely open head center of knowing what is truly inspiring, what is not inspiring, who is and isn't inspiring. And also as I step into this wisdom, helping my loved ones, my friends, my clients with areas where they might need inspiration. So that is me giving you an overview of my own chart and how I've experienced my own human design. If you are interested in experiencing your own human design in a more holistic way, much deeper than what I just talked about, I would be so honored to read for you. And I will leave a link in the show notes on how to book a reading if that sounds interesting. And I also have a, a giveaway right now for a free reading going on on my new Instagram account. I will leave a link to that as well. So if you want to join the giveaway, I will be announcing the winner on April 30th. So in about eight days, I believe. And it would be super exciting to have you in and to get to read for you in that way. Starting in the next episode, we are going to moving on to season two of the podcast. And there's going to be a rebrand. The name is changing. The focus is changing in season two. We already talked about there's going to be a, a big focus on the emotional system in human design throughout season two. And then once we get to season three, we will be focusing more in depth on the business and career application of human design. So thank you so much for listening. I would love it if you share this podcast with somebody that you think would benefit. It is the best way and the biggest compliment for me and the best way to help me grow my podcast. Thank you so much for being here and I will see you in season two.